The Focus EMG machine is the EMG machine for the rest of us. Don't be fooled by its size. It's a fully loaded two-channel EMG machine with ease of use, sophistication, and capabilities that will compete with the best of them out there. With its two channels capabilities, it could do basic and advanced nerve conduction studies, sensory, motor, F-wave, H-reflexes, repetitive stimulation, and blink reflex. Of course, the machine also does very basic and very sophisticated needle EMG analysis. It can do spontaneous activity, interference pattern, motor unit potential analysis, as well as sophisticated single fiber EMG studies and jitter analysis, and does that all automatically. But the thing I like about it most is that it derives its power supply from the laptop via a USB port. Yes, the laptop. So this way you don't have an extra power supply that generates a lot more artifact during your studies. So let's explore some of the different functions of the Focus EMG machine. Well, are you tired of the EMG machine interface? How about a browser interface? How about an interface where you don't have to get into a sensory mode, to a motor mode, and to a needle exam mode, where you can just click on the tab, and that tab will go to wherever you want. It goes to the needle exam, it goes to the motor, then it goes to the sensory. Just as simple as that. Functions exactly like a browser. So you don't have to actually waste your time try to go from one mode to another. How about seeing exactly what part of the potential is being measured? So you have cursor 1, cursor 2, and cursor 3. Here when you store the actual potential that you recorded, it actually highlights in blue the part of the potential that was used for measuring the amplitude, the latency, and the duration, etc. Well, what about these potential in which you can't really see where that takeoff is? Just put your cursor there, press Control alt on your computer, and you have a magnifier. Now you can tell exactly where that takeoff is and position your cursor number one. It's really as simple as that. Well, how about normal values? If you input normal values in the focus, it will compare your results to the normal values you inputted. In this case, the amplitude, as you see where it's highlighted in blue in that table, is 13 microvolt. The mean of the normal values for that nerve is 20, minimum is 10, maximum is 15. So 13 is well within normal limits, and it will show so in that table. This way you know immediately if your potential is normal or abnormal. Of course, this was for the sensory, but you could do exactly the same thing for the motors. Look at this motor response here from the median nerve. It's from the wrist and the elbow. And look at that table on the right. That green rectangle is where the normal values are, minimum and maximum. So that first dark blue is the wrist, the second one is the elbow, and that third one below is the motor conduction velocity. You see that they are all within that green rectangle, which means that they're within normal limits. Now, I just want to show you what happens when you fake it and put that cursor down to say it measured less than actual measure. And now the amplitude that's showing is 3.8 or 3.9. Look at that uh, blue bar. Now it went down and it's below normal limits. So it shows you that immediately. So let's put it back up again. And now it's well within that green rectangle. So you have an immediate view of what is normal and what is abnormal. Of course, I'm going to show you we could do that for the sensory as well. Now, look, I brought the cursor number 2 down. And now, look, the amplitude is 6.3. As I said, the normal was 20. The minimum was 10. So now it's showing you that the deviation from normal is minus 68.5%. So it's giving you an immediate feedback on what's normal, what's abnormal, and by how much. Now, let's go to the needle exam. Everything you do in the needle exam, you can save and retrieve later. You can just click on that tab and see it again. And the potentials you're working on are on red. The ones that are stored are in green. Now, what I would like you to see is that turns an amplitude graph at the bottom of the screen here. It shows you where these contractions fit on the turns and amplitude graph. And another nice feature is that you can actually highlight the parts of the potentials that you want to get a turns and amplitude on. And you see now it shows you that this part of the potential 
has it turns an amplitude in the 500 to 500 area right in that uh, graph you can choose another one obviously and make it bigger or smaller and choose however many potentials you want and then say that's what I want to see the turns and amplitudes on and actually will give you that see this is another one here now this is another point and so forth and so on of course everything that it, that is saved you still have full control on for instance I can still change the sweep speed I can still change the sensitivity and this way I can see the potentials in whatever way I want this way it's not lost to you what you acquired and go back and need to acquire it again under that sensitivity or under that sweep speed and I find this feature extremely useful because I need to look at the potential in a different way of course you could do the same thing for the nerve conductions here's sensor conduction I just change the sweep speed I'm putting it back where it was and then I can change the amplitude the sensitivity this way I still have full control on what I studied and I do not have to go back and re-stimulate and re-stick the patient and re-measure that. It's all stored in memory so you can manipulate it in any way you want after acquisition. Of course the Focus has a lot of other features which you'll discover by yourself but this is one I really like, the impedance check. Find out if your electrodes are working or not. Here it shows you that the cathode has a break and the ground has a break. So you get an immediate feedback as which electrode is working and which not and replace them and get on with your study. Another feature I like is for the F wave. If the computer didn't pick up the right minimum F wave latency, you can actually highlight the area by pressing on the mouse and dragging it where you want the computer to identify the minimum F wave latency. It will put the cursor right exactly where you tell it to look for. Of course, it will then show you the frequency distribution of the different F waves that you recorded at the different latency zones where they were seen. When you're doing the needle exam and the insertional activity, you can actually tell it how to identify the potentials that you see. Is it a fibrillation, fasciculation, positive sharp waves, etc.? And that's what will print out in your report. And did I mention single fiber EMG? This is really a beauty. You acquire the potentials, you store them, and then you can go back and analyze them. You can put the trigger anywhere you want and measure the jitter anywhere you want and do it over and over again to get the best possible recording. Finally, motor unit potential studies couldn't be easier because you can actually isolate the motor unit potentials that you're studying. and You can read their amplitude, their duration, or their area and compare it to normal values that you have inputted for the muscles that you're studying. Want to know more about the focus? Call us at 1-877-TELA-EMG or email us at sales at Our associates are standing by. Thank you.